Bob Min Jail, a sinister structure with a deeply wretched past. Tales of apparitions, disembodied voices, and even physical attacks paint a dark portrait that Bob Min Jail's past inmates may still reside here today. You're playing with things you don't understand. Early records. Um, reveal that children as young as 12 were actually hanged for certain crimes that they committed. Between 1735 and 1909, there was a total of 56 hangings here at Bodmin Jail. Now, if we leave you like that and I go to the lever and remove the safety pin, then that's the end of your life. Is it any wonder that this is one of the most haunted locations in Britain? Countless reports of paranormal experiences spanning decades loom over Bodmin Jail. Are the lifeless souls of the past still imprisoned here? Do the granite walls still hold memories of those gone by? Dr Ian Cooper, a local historian and consultant to Encounters, recounts the location's dark history. In 1778, local justices were given permission to construct a penal facility here at Bodmin. Um, a year later, three facilities have been built, one for serious offenders or felons, a second for debtors who owed money, and a third facility for minor offenders. Um, at the time, Bodmin Jail was regarded as a landmark in prison design. Uh, inmates, depending on the seriousness of their crime, were segregated, um, as were males and females. Uh, there is even hot running water and an infirmary for the sick. Overcrowding became a real issue at Bodmin Jail, and with overcrowding comes uh, disease. And many of the population here, inmate population, suffered as a result, and some even died. Following the end of the Napoleonic Wars in 1815, the entire country experienced a mass crime wave with the return of its soldiers. So would you say then that conditions improved over time in this location? Well Jason, the, the overcrowding um, certainly became less of an issue. Um, by 1820, um, the inmate population had, had, had begun to recede. Um, but would I say conditions improved? No, I certainly wouldn't. Um, in fact, by 1850, the jail was experiencing criticism from some quarters, um, being described, for example, as unfit for purpose. Mark Rablin, Bodmin Jail's very own paranormal expert, tells us about one of the more active areas of the prison. This room here is what we call the long room of the jail. This is the what we call the dark level of the main civilian block. There's 220 cells in this wing over five floors up above us. We have um, what we call a hot spot of energy really in the centre of the room. Lots of people witness um, shadows and shapes coming from diagonally from my left across the wing here over to the right through the central point of this area. We have lots and lots of very touchy-feely spirits in this part of the block. People will get pushed and shoved in various cells. Um, this is where it all started for me eight years ago when I watched a shadow run past me down the walls. Um, so yeah, a brilliant place really. We like the naval prison. It's always quite active. The sightings of children's apparitions are frequent here, with many experiencing having their hand held by small cold fingers most shockingly because they too were former inmates. It was by no means unusual for children to cohabit prisons such as Bodmin Jail with adult felons. Um, in fact, early records um, reveal that children as young as 12 were actually hanged for certain crimes that they committed. Bodmin Jail manager Chris Wilkes 
recalls the aftershocks of his experience in the gallows. There was an instance, gosh, I think probably I hadn't been here 12 months, where um, it was actually very soon after we sorted this rig out, where you try anything in life once, don't you? Yes. So you thought, she's all okay, put the rope around your neck, pull it tight, then actually pull it really tight, and you think, okay, you can actually understand how this works, you can feel the pressure right. on the second and third vertebrae in your neck. Yeah, that's almost like Singapore theory, and the theory is where you try to recreate a bunch of events that have, have gone on before in the hope that you can entice any sort of activity because they can look on and think, oh my God, it's like it's happening again. And they're more likely to then come out and leave a, an energy mark, if you like, either audio or video. I'd agree with you. I mean, certainly after the incident of feeling rope around my neck, rope up the side of my face, and away from home. here, away yeah. from here, totally away from here. Um, and somebody in that um, time, obviously just trying to get the message through that they'd been home. Yeah. Um, I won't put a bag and a rope over my head again. No, it was enough for you. No, yeah. no, I just think you're playing with things you don't mm. understand. Okay, do it once or twice, either so that you can show others or experience or you can experience to say, okay, fine, I understand that. But don't, don't overdo it. Mm. Um, I certainly wouldn't go back and do that again That's because interesting. you don't know what you're going to bring up, do you? You know, I can understand what it, to a degree, must have felt like to be stood on there and know that a couple of seconds later those doors were going to open and you were going to be dispatched to eternity. In an effort to evoke the jail spirits for tonight's investigation, I decided to experience firsthand what the perished souls of the prison would have dreaded in their final moments. I am going to be hanged. Here we are at the hangman's stage at Bodmin Jail. I'm here with Gary Hewitt, the leading authority on executions. Gary, could you possibly tell me what those people would have felt like during and up to leading up to the hanging here? I can't tell you what it were like, Jason, but I can certainly show you. You're going to hang me here today? a demonstration on yourself. Not for real, I hope. No, not for real, <laughs> but we'll take you through the process. OK. OK. OK, thanks. Right. First thing we're going to do is strap, strap your wrists behind right. your back. Behind, Using okay. this, a double buckle leather strap. Left arm straight up the back. Okay. Like so. And then your right arm goes across. This in itself is very daunting. You never fasten the straps too tight because it makes the person uncomfortable and a person who's uncomfortable and in pain yeah. panics. Yeah. So the hands are strapped just with enough restraint. Right. When the arms are strapped, then we'll lead you from the jail to the execution shed and onto the gallows. The assistant executioner will immediately drop to his knees and fasten your legs. Like so. And at this stage, while the assistant executioner is fastening your legs, the executioner is placing the white hood uh, over your head. Okay. And then the noose around your neck. Yeah. The knot of the noose always goes to the left. Right. Because when the drop falls, the knot will slip to the front, so throw your head back, pull your neck forward. Fracture and dislocate C2 and C3 in the neck. Death is instantaneous. That's very daunting. And that is exactly how they will be ready to go. I can see uh, it's, it's a horrible, knowing I even know that I'm not gonna be dropped. I know that I'm gonna walk away from here, but it still feels very daunting having this on. It's a very frightening process. But in reality, it's done in a matter of seconds. I was going to say, how long is it between having the bag and the rope placed on before the lever's pulled? Well, from the last man hanged in here at Bodmin, 
from him walking in through the door onto the drop to being dead with 10 seconds. <laughs> so he hasn't really got time to think about no, it, has he? No. The quickest ever time at an execution was 7.6 seconds, achieved by Albert Pierpoint in 1950. That's amazing. Totally amazing. Now, if we leave you like that and I go to the lever and remove the safety pin, then that's the end of your life. In 1844, a young man was sentenced to death for the murder of a young maid. Matthew Weeks, only 23 years of age, graced the hangman stage here at Bodmin Jail for the murder of Charlotte Diamond at the base of Router. He cut her throat from side to side. On the 14th of April, 1844, Matthew and Charlotte went for a romantic walk on the moor. Little did Charlotte know that she would ultimately meet her untimely death, her life cut short by a blunted blade. Was Matthew Weeks the perpetrator? Some believe Matthew was innocent and framed by Thomas Prout, her love rival. Whatever happened that day, whoever savagely murdered Charlotte, Matthew Weeks will always be known as the killer. One particular poem paints a gruesome picture of the events that transpired that day. Charlotte walked with Matthew through the Sunday mist, never saw the blade waiting at his wrist. Charlotte, she was gentle, but they found her in the flood, her Sunday beads among the reeds beaming with her blood. Her skin was soft as sable, her eyes were white as day, her hair was blacker than the bog that licked her life away. Her cheeks were made of honey, her throat was made of flame, where all round the razor had written its red name. Charlotte's lifeless body was found here at the base of Rautor, a few days later by a search party sent out to look for her. By this time, Matthew Weeks had fled the scene and was eventually arrested at his sister's house in Plymouth. He was found guilty of this heinous crime and sentenced to death. A few months later, he was hanged at Bodmin Jail in front of 20,000 people. Does his spirit wander the corridors of Bodmin Jail? Tonight, I hope to find out. Here we go, 12 hours locked down on my own in Bodmin Jail. goes off it's static and to turn it off there you go that is unusual for that to be going off Let's stay here for a minute Matthew Weeks if you are here then come and talk to me. You were 
executed for murdering Charlotte Diamond. You were 23 years of age, but she was your lover. She was your world. Why, why did you murder her? Maybe you didn't. If you did not murder the love of your life, now's your time to tell us. Matthew, are you here? I'm offering a chance of truth. forward and do that again please. At this point you'll notice something seems to appear from the bottom right hand part of the screen. A moment later something also appears at the top right part of the screen. Could this be a flying object? Could it be a bat or maybe an insect? While I was filming, I also had a standoff camera locked off down the bottom end of the hallway. As you'll see, whatever was visible on, on the hand cam is not visible on the tripod cam. So if it was a bat or an insect, it certainly didn't become visible on the other camera. Talking to the spirits of Bob in jail. Please come and make yourself known now. During the time in the basement, my voice recorder was continually running. And upon review, I heard what sounds like an inaudible voice. I can't seem to make out what it's saying. Maybe you can. And also we picked up what sounded like laughter. Whatever these sounds were, they certainly weren't audible to my own ears. And they also didn't come out on any recording equipment such as the cameras, just the voice recorder. One last interesting anomaly we seem to pick up is from one of our CCTV cameras fixed to the ceiling. As you watch me walk by with my handheld camera, a strange white light anomaly seems to appear from the bottom left hand screen. As the night drew deeper, I moved the investigation to the long room. battery operated devices which are all around yet that camera just turned itself off and every now and then you can hear a weird clicking sound Here. None of my devices make that sound. The K2 has not responded. Sure the K2 just 
just lit up there. Can you just light the K2 up? Could you do that again, please? Come on. Oh, excellent. Can you do it again? Come forward, please. If you're here with me now, please walk forward and light up this machine on my leg. Come on, please. You've just done it for me. You can do it again. Don't be afraid. All I want to do is talk to you. Oh, thank you. Can you do it again, please? Is it Sarah? Sarah, hello, my name's Jason. Are you willing to talk to me tonight? Something down there. What the f is that? Clearly I hear a loud bang here, which is also picked up on our various equipment around the room. What the f is that? As you will see, we caught nothing on the thermal imager, but the sound, the loud bang, and the anomaly with the K2 is unusual because you have to remember I'm the only one in Bodmin Jail at this time. Here we are in the naval wing. It's an amazing place. <clears throat> These cells stretch upwards. Three, four, to these upper floor cells but even so the thought being down below even though there's no one in no one in this jail whatsoever it's pretty amazing it's pretty intimidating is the word that camera has just turned itself off. This camera turned itself off earlier on its own. Both have got ample battery life left. The DVR for recording on the thermal imager is just stuck on and I cannot turn it off. And this is all since we've been in this cell and we've only been in here five minutes. Something doesn't want us to use technology in here. What the f was that? That was... 
I was in here. And we're still filming in here. So that is good. If that was you, can you do that again, please? Are you trying to be playful? Come on. I don't scare that easy. You need to try a bit harder than that. The locked off camera in the cell picked up the sound of the stone and you can clearly hear two impacts. It sounds as almost as though the stone was thrown against a wall which then rolled onto the floor. Could it have fallen from above? It seems unlikely due to the sound and the nature of the impacts. was that what the f was that that was that was in here <laughs> and we're still filming in here I'm trying to help you. Can you not show yourself to me? Really appreciate if you could show yourself to me right now. If you show yourself, I can try and help you. As we moved into the witching hour, I moved my investigation to the upper floors of Bobman Jail. This floor, as Mark, the Bobman Jail Paranormal Expert mentioned previously, has been known for transfiguration and potential demonic spirit. straight away you do get a very strange feeling it's cold it's so cold why is it got so cold I don't feel like I'm alone and I don't feel like I'm around anything friendly I just feel like Wispy stuff just went past. Could have been dust. I need to play that back six minutes.
Nicholas is talking upstairs now. Lesson. I'm sure it just said a lesson. They're trying to teach me a lesson. I can tell you right now that this experience is becoming more unpleasant. You will notice that what seems to be an orb appears at the bottom right hand of the screen. At first it seems to have the characteristics of a flying insect, but you'll see that it suddenly manifests itself on screen. It was an interesting evening at Bodmin Jail, and an amazing, if not eerie experience being locked down for 12 hours alone in such a foreboding atmosphere, especially in the dark of night. My expectations were overwhelmed with personal experiences, and I certainly felt on many occasions that I was not alone. Were the spirits of Bodmin Jail toying with me? It seemed as though I was being watched and studied at the start of the night in the basement. Did I make contact with the prison's eternal souls? Were they responsible for the stone throne and the various visual and audio media we captured? It is certainly a place for future research and I can't help but feel that the spirits such as Matthew Weeks and Selena Wadge are still lost here.